the Merrimack River, the fourth largest river in New England, providing drinking water to 600,000 people. Tens of thousands of boats swim and fish throughout its 117 miles. And thanks to decades of cleanup efforts, native wildlife species once decimated by pollution are returning. But like dozens of rivers across America, the Merrimack is still struggling with a nagging man-made problem. Every year, hundreds of millions of gallons of untreated sewage is dumped into the river. Raw sewage in our water in the 21st century. Why is this happening? What's being done about it? And what can you do to help? In the 1800s, industry took off and manufacturing cities sprang up along the Merrimack. The wild flowing river was being utilized as a source of hydropower for factories. Dams and canals were erected, farms and floodplains became city streets. The Industrial Revolution was in full swing in the Merrimack. Tens of thousands poured into cities like Lowell and Lawrence to work the mills. These cities had to deal with a crucial problem, how to discard of sewage, stormwater, and other wastes from the mills. The Merrimack River was the obvious option, a continuously draining water source that would make waste disappear. All that started to change in 1972 with the passage of the Clean Water Act. The federal government began a massive effort to build sewage plants on America's waterways. Over 30 sewage plants have been built along the Merrimack, and most of the time, no raw sewage enters the Merrimack. It's a much cleaner river thanks to the Clean Water Act, new technology, taxpayers, and our hardworking wastewater treatment professionals. Many street drains are still connected to sewage lines. When it rains hard, the sewage pipes fill up too fast and can't handle the volume. To prevent sewage from backing up in the people's homes, it gets diverted directly into the Merrimack instead. That's called a combined sewer overflow, or CSO. Along the Merrimack, there are 53 CSO outflows in five cities, Averill, Lawrence, Lowell, and Massachusetts, and Nashua and Manchester in New Hampshire. In a typical year, they release a combined total of about 550 million gallons of sewage into the Merrimack. Across America, there are about 800 other cities where CSOs occur. You might ask, isn't dumping raw sewage into a river illegal? In this case, technically no. The EPA recognizes that the financial cost of fixing the problems all at once would probably bankrupt the city, and the federal government's no longer paying for the cost of building sewage plants and upgrading sewer pipes. So this is a compromise of sorts. Each city has a legal agreement with the EPA that allows it to continue releasing sewage into the river. As part of that deal, the city must spend money to gradually fix the CSO problem. But these massive infrastructure upgrades cost hundreds of millions of dollars. In the Merrimack Valley, our five CSO cities are trying to fix the problem. But at this rate, the CSL spigot won't shut off for at least another 20 years. At the Merrimack River Watershed Council, we are working with our cities to close that spigot off as soon as possible. And here's why. When sewage is released into the Merrimack, it contains bacteria, antibiotics, viruses, and other pathogens that can harm the health of humans and animals that come into contact with the river, causing rashes, gastrointestinal problems, and other health issues. A recent study found that in the Merrimack Valley, there's a significant increase in emergency room admissions for gastrointestinal problems in the days following the CSO release. 600,000 people drink from the Merrimack. There's no other river in New England that provides water to so many people. Cleaner river water means that our water treatment plants don't have to strain as hard to purify the water that comes out of your faucet. Tens of thousands of people enjoy the river every year for kayaking, boating, swimming, and fishing. No other river in our region sees as much use. When CSOs occur, people are urged to stay out of the affected portion of the Merrimack for at least 48 hours. In 2018, that meant 135 days were off limits to recreation on the Merrimack. The good news is, Lots of people are working to fix the CSO issue. What can you do to help maintain clean and bountiful water in the Merrimack? Here's our top five list, but please visit www.merrimack.org for more detailed information. Conserve water, just use less. The less water going through the system during rainstorms, the better. It's doing less laundry, fixing your leaky faucets, collecting rain, and redirecting your downspout. Keep water clean. Wash your car at a car wash rather than at home. Pick up after your pets. Minimize use of fertilizers and pesticides in your yard. Maintain your septic tanks. 
purchase eco-friendly household detergents and cleaners, and dispose of oil, paints, antifreeze, and other household chemicals properly, not into storm drains or sewers. If your community doesn't already have a program for collecting household hazardous wastes, ask your town to set one up. Install native plants, plant more trees, and consider a rain garden or green roof or permeable pavement for your driveway. Use your voice. Get your elected representatives on speed dial. Write letters to your local newspapers. Post your opinion on social media. And help educate friends and family. And vote. Elections matter. Support local champions. You also vote with your dollar. The Merrimack River Watershed Council and Elevated Thought are just two of the local groups working day in and day out for a healthy environment and a just society. For more information, visit www.merrimack.org.